My boy, thank you very much for coming. Um, again, this is the will be the fourth lecture on the coronavirus in one form or another. So, this uh, lecture is really a prayer, prayers for the coronavirus. I thought it would be apropos during this time of crisis to relook the modium, the thank you prayer that we say in all of our Amida prayers throughout the year, the standing prayer. And even though we now we are now in all in our homes, separated from one another, may this prayer of thanks and gratitude to God Almighty bring a quick and successful end to this pandemic. Now, the modem prayer is only one of two prayers that we recite in the Amida, in the standing prayer that we bow our heads at the beginning and the end of the prayer itself. When we bow, what we're doing is we show we, that we subjugate our will and acknowledge his will as being the supreme, supreme being. We demonstrate that God has the ultimate wisdom and goodness and that he is the ultimate director of our lives. Every time we bow, we break our resistance of allowing ourselves to be dominated by God's will. We demonstrate physically that we want us to break our stiff-neckedness approach that denies that what God commands and that it's, it is good for us. When a person bows in the Amida, the law is that he's supposed to bow deeply enough so that all 18 vertebrae in his spine protrude. The connection between this prayer and the idea of the 18 vertebrae is that this prayer is the 18th prayer, the 18th one in the Shemona Esrei. Now we say this prayer 18 times a week. Again, nothing's an accident. In its original version, though, this prayer was actually, would have been the 17th blessing. And 17 is the numerical value of the gematria of the word tov, which is good. And with the addition of the extra blessing, the almoshinim, that was added later by the sages, it has now become the 18th. Again, 18 is the numerical value of the word chai, which is life. So this prayer, the modim, is our lifeline to our Father in Heaven, which is why it is said quietly, just a private conversation between you and your Father in Heaven. No protocol. Now, the significance of bowing until all the vertebrae in your spine protrude is that it is not sufficient to bow to God in only some areas of our lives. <clears throat> we must show our complete deference to God in all areas to the extent that we are willing to bow to God in all areas of our lives, allowing our spines to become, so to speak, pipelines for positive life and energy. Now, I'm about to translate the modium, the prayer of thanks. And at first I was going to do it in English, but I think I'm going to do it in Hebrew. You know, many of us, when we became Baal Jews, when we came back to religion, went to Hebrew school as kids and that taught us how to read Hebrew. And when we came back, we were thrilled that all of a sudden we could actually read in Hebrew. And those that did not have that advantage had to really read in English and then hopefully later on learn how to read in Hebrew. So it sounds like we had the advantage knowing how to read Hebrew, which is not true. Because if, at least if you pray in English, you have some idea what the prayer is. And even though you cannot translate necessarily every word, word for word, you have an idea of the gist of the prayer. Many times for us who knew Hebrew as, ki as children, when we come back, A, we may not learn to translate the words. And even if we do, we say it out of rote and we say it so quickly. Do we really think about the words that we're saying? So hopefully this discussion we'll have now will make things better for us to do so. The prayer begins with the word modim anak nulach shatahu Hashem alokeinu alokei avoseinu liolam voed. We thank you that you are the Lord, our God, and the God of our fathers forever. Not only do we thank God for his special relationship with us, but we also acknowledge that though we may not have any merits, thankfully he still remembers and connects us to the merits of our forefathers. Continue with the word surah chayenu, the rock of our lives. This phrase refers to our souls, which are hewn from the beneath God's throne of glory. We only achieved 
life when God blew from his being into our bodies. The breath of life. Yipach Yapav Ruach Hayim. He is our life force. Continues with the words, Mugin Yeshenu. The shield of our salvation. Atahu Lador Vador. That he, you are our salvation in every generation. Now, just like we end the first blessing in the Amidah with the words, Mugin Avram, the shield of Abraham, whose kindness still protects us, though we have sinned. And so to here, God, God Almighty is our constant shield, protecting us from all difficulties, even though, again, we have no merit. Continues with the words, No Delacha on the Saper Tehila we thank you and we recount your praise. Many times we do thank God for some goodness that he has bestowed upon us. But even though we thank him, do we tell others about God's kindness? You know, it's not enough that we say thank you to him privately. We must let the world know of God's benevolence. You know, it's interesting. When we think that God has been unkind to us, <laughs> then we tell everyone. It continues with the words... For al chayenu hamsurim biyodecha, the al hanishor seinam akudas loch, not too far. The al chayenu hamsurim biyodecha, and for our lives which you have given in, into your hand, gratitude for our physical lives. Every moment of our lives, we exist only because you, God Almighty, gives it to us. We take for granted those things that we view as natural. And how many people thank God daily for air? For the ability to breathe. And then it says, and for our souls which we are keep in safekeeping with you. Now the Hebrew word for the word safekeeping is a pikadun, which means collateral. <clears throat> Some say that the word refers to the fact that part of our soul rises up to heaven each and every night when we go to sleep. <clears throat> we say that our souls are in safekeeping with God because he returns them to us Every day. Now, even though we may not merit his doing so. Which is why we begin our prayer every day with the words as we get up. First things we say. I offer thanks before you. Continues with the words. And for your miracles which are with us daily. Open miracles. Though we may not see them or acknowledge the fact that they exist. Much like how miraculously our bodies function. But we take it for granted. There's something natural. And, but in reality, it is truly miraculous. It continues with the words. And for your continual wonders and goodnesses. That exist every evening, morning and afternoon. We walk through life <laughs> like it's a walk in the park. No worries. In reality, we need to know that life is a minefield. If not for God's protective care, <clears throat> we wouldn't last a minute. Not only does he walk through life with us many times, it is he who carries us in his arms. And it says, And <laughs> We are superlative because your mercies never cease. And you are merciful since your kindness never ends. And for that reason, we are always we always place our hope in you. Our relationship with God Almighty is not merit-based. We have no merit. And if we did at some time have some merit, we have long since overdrawn our account. Our connection to God Almighty is that of a child to a parent. His love for us is unconditional. Yes, he reprimands us and even sometimes even punishes us. But all that he does is done out of love and affection. As the Holy Baal Shem Tov stated, God loves a person even more than an older couple who has been blessed with a child in their late years. There is no end to his love. And I repeat, there is nothing, nothing that we can do to end that love. And then it continues in the next paragraph, Yalkulam, Yisparek Vyisramam Vyisnase, Shimcha Malkeinu Tomidiolam Voyad. 
And for all of these, may your name, our King, be continually blessed, exalted, and extolled forever and all time. Having thanked God for all the wonderful things that he does for us, we now praise him. We express our joy and appreciation with all the goodness that God has bestowed upon us. And we understand that goodness is not always instant. Sometimes goodness is preceded by the word no or not yet. It says, the Hallelu Shim Hagado, the Olam, Kito, Hokito, Hokel Yeshua Seno, there's a Seno Sel, Hokel Atob. And all living things shall forever thank you and praise your great name eternally. For you are good, God, you are our everlasting salvation and help, O benevolent God. Now, what I find very interesting, the word we say, call Achayim, all things that are alive. But Achayim alludes to much more than that. The word Chayim is an allusion for the word Ches, is for a chola, a sick person. The Yud is for the Yam, for those that cross the sea. The other Yud is for Yisurim, for some of the people that are imprisoned or within the grasp of anything that holds them. And the, and the mem at the end is for Midbar, which is desert. These are the four prevails that our ancestors in Egypt had when they came out. So Chaim is an illusion for that, and that's why we bring a Korban Toda, a thanks offering. In fact, today we bench Gomel because of that. The whole idea is that we thank God for Chaim for life, but even for those that are sick, a chola, or a yam, those that are in turbulent waters where life is so difficult. Or Yud, Yusurim, people that are, pos- are incarcerated and are bothered, again, within the confines of their own mind, imprisoned. And then the Mem, again, for the Midbar, the people who are lost in the desert, thirsting for things, many times things that are not important, things that are getting addicted, all the, all the challenges of life. All the people in these situations still praise God. We say here that as long as we are alive, we have opportunities, challenges, and hope. We have reasons to be thankful for simply just being alive. We then refer to God as our salvation and our help forever. Now, salvation occurs whenever God helps us, especially when we have no way of helping ourselves. At other times, when we are capable of doing something on our own. We don't always appreciate someone else taking over. Therefore, when we can help ourselves, God helps us along with our efforts. So God thereby helps us in different ways, depending on whether we are totally overwhelmed by the challenge at hand or just need some assistance. We say the words, Baruch HaTo Hashem, HaTov Shimcha Olchano Elohodos. Blessed are you, God, goodness is your name, and to you it is fitting to offer thanks. With these final words of the prayer, we say that we recognize and acknowledge that the various opportunities and gifts of our lives come directly from God's goodness. Therefore, it is appropriate to give praise and thanks to God. To you, it is fitting to give thanks. Now, I mentioned in my last lecture that Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, introduced the method whereby we pray to God in the Amidah, the standing prayer. First praise, then request, or the theme of the day on Shabbat or Yom Tov. And then the last three blessings that we finish with thanks and gratitude. Now, when we pray the Amidah, we are not supposed to make personal requests in either the first or the last three blessings. Based on that fact, it seems very strange that in the last blessings, two of them are really requests. Ritze, look, where we ask God to return the temple service, a request. And then again, the last bracha, blessing, sim shalom, bestow peace. Again, a request. So how do we understand this about not making requests in the last three blessings? So the answer has to be our relationship with God, our Father, is different than our relationship with people. Imagine if someone has helped you in the past. The greatest news you can give them, tell them, 
is that you thank them for their previous assistance, but now you can stand on your own two feet. Both of you are happy. With God Almighty, the greatest way that we can say thanks to Him for all that He has done for us in the past is by saying to Him that we thank Him for all that He has done previously for us and that we acknowledge that we realize that now we need Him even more. God is a loving Father who wants to be relevant. His greatest joy is when we turn to Him for assistance. When something is important, many times we find that we are given a second chance, a makeup. Pesach, for example, the redemption of our fathers from the oppressive slavery of Egypt, is so important to our natural identity that God Almighty gave us a makeup, Pesach Sheni, a second Pesach, a second chance to say thank you and to reconnect. Now, following this line of reasoning, the rabbis of the Talmudic period determined that the congregation should say a second modem, prayer, when the Shliach Tzibur, the one leading the prayers, repeats this prayer. They instituted this prayer in order to demonstrate that we can never, never thank God enough, especially since things we do daily become habitual and we just say the words out of rote. We parrot the words with little thought to what the words that we have spoken really mean. Yes, we said the word modem, thank you, but did we really mean it? Maybe, just maybe, if we repeat the word modem again, we might just connect to a feeling of true gratitude for all the many blessings that God Almighty gives us. Another prayer that we should focus on, especially during this pandemic, is the prayer we call Pita Makatoris, which tells us about the ingredients that made up the incense that was offered in the temple twice daily. Why would that be important? We read in the portion of Korah, chapter 17, verses 11 and 12, <clears throat> excuse me, where a plague broke out in the camp and people were dying. Moshe told Aaron, his brother, to take the fire pan and place on it incense and stand between the dead and the living. And he did so, and the plague was abated. And so we see the power of the incense in bringing, being able to end the plague. And because of its significance, this prayer is recited three times daily. You know, Sephardim recite this prayer Saturday night after they make Hagudala as a protection for the coming week. In fact, I knew a Sephardic rabbi, Rabbi Zidi, if you remember him, who carried this prayer with him always in his pocket. And it was written on a piece of parchment. Another important prayer that we say and that we should pay special attention to especially during this pandemic, is the first blessing of the requests. You graciously bestow man with knowledge. Now, what's interesting about this prayer is that there are 17 words in this prayer, <coughs> Excuse me, which is the gematria, the numerical value, again, as we mentioned, the word tov. And there are 67 letters and the verse itself, which is 68, the gematria, the numerical value, the word chayim, life that in order for us to live a good life, we must be blessed with intellect. We pray and we hope that God will inspire all those that are involved with finding a cure for this pandemic and a vaccine that will end this plague forever. Now, it's interesting that in times of difficulty, certain prayers jump right out at us and we see them in a way that we never saw them before. David Amal, King David, ended the book of Psalms with the verse, Kol HaNeshama Tahalel Ka Halel Ka. Let every being that has a soul praise God. Praise God. We say this praise to God three times daily in our prayers. I find it interesting that the word Neshama, soul, has the exact same letters as the word Neshima, breath. Adam, first man, was given a soul when God blew into his nostrils the breath of life. So the word soul and breath are very much connected. This pandemic affects the respiratory system, the neshima, which can bring on the loss of one's life, his neshama. We need to remember to thank God for every breath we take. Every breath is a gift. According to many authorities, this pandemic was spread by one person from a laboratory in China. And just one person had the ability to infect over 
two and a half million people all over the world. And so, too, we need to know and believe that our prayers, the prayers of average people, but said with deep concentration, can have the power to end this pandemic, much like Aaron, the high priest, was able to do so for the Jews in the desert, one person. Let us hope and pray that all our prayers will be answered by God Almighty. Let us begin our day with Moda'ani, words of gratitude. And may we continue throughout our days to thank him for all the many blessings that he bestows upon us. And through that, may we merit to see the final redemption with Mashiach Sakenu, where peace, good health, and prosperity will reign. That ends the class on the uh, prayers for the um, pandemic.